do my hormones and how they are regulated or dysregulated supersede energy balance or the calories that I consume? Well, the, let me answer it really simply right up front, and then I'll start to get into the details. So do hormones impact fat gain, fat loss, and that kind of thing? Absolutely, 100%, yes. Do they supersede fuel and calories? Absolutely, 100%, no. And here, and here is, so that's the, 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 the simple answer, but let's get into this. And the reason I say absolutely 100% no, they don't supersede calories is because calories impact hormones and hormones impact calories. In other words, this is a false dichotomy that has been created. There is no real difference. When you cut calories down, you adjust hormonal biochemistry. When you bring calories up, you adjust hormonal biochemistry. And so these two things are not opposites. They are synergists. They are essentially working together. And it's sort of this false dichotomy that people create that it's all hormones, which usually means all quality of food and no quantity or calories, or it's all quantity of food and calories and no hormones or quality. And this quality quantity argument is a silly argument in my mind. It is, it is both and it is extremely important for us to understand that. So let me set everyone up like this and then I'll see where you want to go, Shane. There are two things, and I'll, I'm going to choose my phrasing carefully here. There are two things required for sustained fat loss. I use the word sustained and fat loss for a reason because pretty much anyone can lose weight for a brief moment in time. You may not lose fat, you may lose some muscle and some water as well, but if you do a few things, you can lose weight for brief periods of time. But having sustained fat loss is important. And there are two things required to do that. One, you must absolutely achieve calorie deficits. And you, two, you must absolutely achieve hormonal metabolic balance. Now, when I say, quote, hormonal metabolic balance, what I'm essentially saying there is that you really have to have your hormonal software in your body balanced and not stressed out. And I use the word stressed out is because if you really want an analogy for your metabolism, it's basically a stress barometer. And so when there's too much stress on the system, either from stress like emotional stress or stress like we're going through with COVID right now, or stress of eating too much or too little, or stress of exercising too much or too little, anytime you do that, you create a hormonal software program that we can best describe as the starvation response. And what happens is hunger, cravings go up, metabolic rate goes down, and that adjusts the calorie thermostat. And so you can see how you're basically on this pendulum or this seesaw. If hormones move, calories move. If calories move, hormones move. There is no separation between the two. So then the question is, and this is the final thing I'll say to see where you want to go, how, how do we um, manipulate this in a sense? When I talk about hormones now, which to me mean all signaling molecules in the body, because if you're gonna get, if you're gonna speak in biochemistry language, a hormone is really a cholesterol containing molecule that does certain things. But I'm talking about all signaling molecules in the body. If you really want to talk about those, you don't really need to talk about leptin and ghrelin and CCK and GLP and GIP and cortisol and insulin. You don't need to even think about that. You just need to think about what they are impacting. And what they are impacting is hunger and energy and cravings and sleep and mood and exercise performance and exercise recovery and libido and menses and erection and digestion and headaches and joint pains and all of these things. So if you can understand what your physiology is feeling, you understand what your hormones are doing. So now imagine if you just cut calories down, what ends up happening? Well, you start to feel some things hunger and cravings primarily, which means your hormones change. And so if you're really gonna play this game, what I would say most people need to do is realize that, that anytime you push on the metabolism, you are changing hormones. And if you change them too much in the wrong direction, you're gonna have hunger and cravings go through the roof and you're going to shortchange yourself. It'd be like you're playing on the seesaw, me and Shane on a seesaw together, and he, he jumps off and I go flying and like hit the ground real quick because he jumped off so fast and I do damage, right? That's what a lot of people are doing because they're not understanding that they really need to get these things balanced. Final thing here, how do you get them balanced? I have a funny little acronym that I talk about all the time that 
uh, people make fun of me for and I become famous for, but it actually will help you remember this. It's called HEC, H-E-C, Hunger, Energy, and Cravings, or SHMEC, Sleep, Hunger, Mood, Energy, and Cravings. This is an acronym that I teach people to understand if their hormones are balanced or not. If your HEC, Hunger, Energy, and Cravings, or SHMEC, Sleep, Hunger, Mood, Energy, and Cravings, are in check, then your hormones are balanced. If they're out of check, then you can be sure that your physiology and your hormones are stressed out. And that's absolutely going to impact your calories.